Rue's assistant, who I had known before, Natasha. Right. And Natasha said, um, this, is where, this is where the room is. This is where everything takes place. So this will be your room to start doing stuff. And, you know, not unlike any other queen, there's the, you know, the, the storage tub containers with, there's these wigs, there's these wigs, there's these wigs, right. there's hair pieces, there's sure. bobby pins, there's whatever you, and then you make a list of what you need as far as materials but the wigs are a wig wardrobe. So it's the things that she's comfortable and has approved color-wise. Mm. And, um, you know, you kind of work within that. So it was very scary because we had never been on that schedule before. Yeah. So that schedule is essentially, uh, the, each episode is like two days. So the first day is main challenge, mini challenge, main challenge. And then the second day, ruse and drag. And that's when the girls do runway and critique. And so... Um, you know, essentially, at first I was like, well, what kind of hair do you want to wear? And she was like, D pick one, pick one and, and, and just come up with something. And so we did that. And then there's, you know, the, the, the thing of it is, is from se the first season that we worked on, which was nine to ten, we asked for notes. Like, what is working and what's not working? Mm -hmm. Because um, my goal is for her, her to be satisfied. Yeah. The fans are never going to be satisfied. No. Never. It's, it's about never. what RuPaul likes, and, and that's also, all RuPaul cares about. And the fans don't keep my lights on either. No, they do not. So um, if she doesn't like something, she'll say. And so after the first uh, first season, you know, she said, or the first season that we were on, she said, I, I'd like to see uh, maybe less less sculptural things, you know, because she's the she's not really a drag queen. She's like the uber woman. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like... It's a Barbie doll come to life. So you have to really, it's not a Barbie doll in plastic, it's not a life in plastic. It's outside the plastic, but it's still the doll. Mm -hmm. So she wanted, you know, a little bit more, what I like to call air in the wig. So it like, looks like there's a little more movement to it, not so like, right. There's a place for that, but there's a place for that on other beautiful drag queens. It kind of needs to look a little bit unattainable, mm -hmm. a little bit different. And, um, you know, I will definitely say for us, we felt, I guess I can't speak for Raven, but I can speak for myself and say, I feel like I've constantly had an improvement. And I don't think what I ever did, I, I'm not bothered by anything I ever did, but I can definitely say there were factors. There's factors that lead into every episode and every styling and every choice. And, you know, you figure, Rue is, we're at the studio at 6 a.m. and sometimes she's not getting out of drag until midnight. Yeah. So there is a lot that goes into it, not just for my consideration, but there's her consideration. There's actual factors like, well, is the hair going to do that? Like, is that, is that color going to read that way? What's this going to look like in a post-edit situation? Yeah, so many What's, things to think so about. to think about. And so it makes it difficult when people see something that they maybe don't approve of and they think, well, you... I think people are under the impression that I wake up and the birds come in and pull the blankets back. Uh -huh. And then I walk in and I'm like, hi, RuPaul. <laughs> Today you're going to wear a blue wig. Right. And then I just put it on her head. And I'm like, now shoo, shoo, go dance. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. And it's no. never going to work that way. It's never going to work that way. Were you uh, in the room watching Murder, She Wrote and Golden Girls? She, we, do, we do watch those. We do watch those. And um, we do have, um, we do have uh, play, music playlists. I, I have learned so much. I mean, I've known a lot about music. I'm a huge music fan. And I've learned so much more just from being in her dressing room because of what she puts on rotation. It will mm. go anywhere from the most obscure Dolly Parton song to the most popular Lil' Kim song to something from Broadway to something from Steely Dan. Like, it will go and it, you have to just keep on board and you'll learn so much about music and what you enjoy. Um, but, you know, you just, it, every day it's like I try to do a few styles and then see what works with an outfit or I'll say, hey, I see that dress hanging there. What do you think about something like this for that? And then, you know, it's, a, it's also based on her choice. She might walk in one day and say, remember I was going to wear the pink dress? I'm going to wear the brown one. I want to do brown. Did you have to swallow your fear of being yes. up close to RuPaul. Yes. Because she, I mean, you knew her last, really, right. as your judge, as the boss of the show. Right. And suddenly, there you are. She's asking your opinion. You're taking over from Matthew, which mm. is crazy. You know, I never had a fear of RuPaul just because 
before I ever, there was ever, the, when there was only, the only reality show at the time was The Real World. And this is like maybe 2000 or just before. I used to have my very first drag show at a place called Encounters in Pasadena. And RuPaul came to the show twice. And we knew who she was and mm -hmm. we knew what she was about, but we had never been around her. And she came in and she said, it was a tiny bar. There was nobody would come to this club. And she said, why do you girls not have a spotlight for your show? And we said, well, we have one, but we don't really know how to use it, and we don't have an operator. And she said, I'll operate the spotlight for you. And she got back there, and just at the time, <laughs> she used to wear a cowboy hat all the time. And she had a few people with her, and this old rickety spotlight. And I remember she had, I thought she had a beer. Maybe she had something else, but I would swear she had a beer. And she sat in this corner next to the D DJ booth, and nobody had any inkling that that was RuPaul. And she did that, and she came the next month and did it again. And she said, whenever you're on stage, you deserve a spotlight, remember that. And so going in, and she's, we had a long conversation. She said, you know, one year, one of these days, this reality stuff is gonna make a big deal. There could probably even be drag queens on reality TV, because we were talking about the real world right. TV show. And then that happened, and like Chanel went on, and then Morgan went on, and Raven went on, and then I went on third. and. Um, I wasn't ever afraid. I, I guess my biggest fear, if there's ever been a fear as far as working in the industry, is uh, looking like a fool with, for something that was within your control. Yeah. And that is one of the things that you can't be afraid of or will lead to, I think, your demise, which is you just can't be afraid to look like a fool sometimes. You just have to. Not saying that you should always look messy or stupid or whatever, but you have to just jump in, do it, and go, okay, I did it. I did it, I did it. And that was kind of the thing with, with jumping into the wigs. It was like, you're just gonna have to do it. You're gonna have to do it. They get it done. You, get it done, and if, and, it, and if it, she's never going to look, she's never gonna look like what Matthew did. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because that was what Matthew that's did. What Matthew now you did. have to figure out and, what you and do. And he set a wheel, and Matthew also had, has worked with RuPaul since 1992. Yeah. And I worked with RuPaul for one day. Yeah. So to compare the two is very difficult, but people won't, won't see that. They'll just say, you stole Matthew's job. Uh huh. You came in and you were a bitch on Drag Race and you're probably a bitch at the show. Mm. You're awful. Wow. Willem hates you. Mm. You're mean to Trixie. Mm. All of those things. That's what people want to believe. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay because that's what maybe they've been fed and they li live only on two or three Instagram accounts. Right. There's nothing I can do about that. That's not everybody. Not everybody has been that way. But that's it, a lot of pressure to deal with is. stepping into huge shoes, big job, it and is. being on the schedule of that show. Yeah, the schedule is really tight and there are, again, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. I mean, we do get there at six o'clock, but I, you know, you walk around and have breakfast and there, there, is a, there is a little bit of, I will say something I really appreciate, which is kind of knowing like, well, bitch, I have an office over here. Like, uh -huh. I, you, I'm gonna close the door. I'm over here in my area. Yeah, because you're not a contestant anymore. Right. You, but you know the culture too. Well, and it's funny because there's been a couple of times where we've gone over as uh, to the workroom to maybe um, pick up items. Like, oh, they have some stuff you might be able to want to use for Ruth's outfit, maybe a brooch or uh, safety pins or something. Yeah. And we go over, and we've I've had um, people that don't know who we are or like uh -huh. wh why we're there have been like, you can't be in this area, you can't, uh, sorry, this area's <laughs> off limits, you guys can't be behind the cameras. And like, I'm always like, oh, I, I totally understand. And like, I'd walk away and I'm always like, hey, just, my name's Delta, I'm, I work on Ruth's hair, so I might be back here again, just so you know. And they're like, oh, you know, we didn't know. And um, there's been times where some of them have been like, well, that really doesn't matter because this or this, and I'm like, okay, look, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do all that, but. I don't um, wanna say anything, but I would like you to know I do RuPaul's hair, so you well, better I wanted get to out say, of my like, way. I don't wanna say anything, but I don't fill out a timesheet, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that. So did you do this last season that the All-Stars is yeah. airing right now? Yeah, so we did uh, most of season nine, 10, All-Stars two, 11, all what are we in? No, we yeah. We're all stars, stars four. So we've done so all, all of them. Two, you did all the all stars. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, you. I think the styles. Maybe we have, did. No, we did all stars. Two, two. Starting with two. Did we? 
Shit, I don't, know, I don't you tell know. me. I don't know. Somebody's <laughs> going to find out what you did. They're going to come back and say, bitch, she's lying. She didn't do nobody's well, hair. Well, the, the hair has been looking more and more gorgeous. Thanks. It's really just the whole, you and Raven, I know you can't speak for her, but I mean, that's such a huge job to step into. And I really just think you guys, it's gotten, it was good to start and it's gotten better and better. Thank and you. And it just looks stunning. I mean, it's exciting. It's probably going to go all downhill from here because we filmed <laughs> all stars after 11, so... <laughs> It's going to be like, <laughs> uh, wait no, a minute. Uh, now, are you still doing it? Yeah. I Well, I mean, as far as, uh, so right now, um, we are not in production of Drag Race. Right now, uh, production will start for uh, season 11. I don't know if there's going to be an All-Stars, how that works. I'm assuming there's going to be a season, well, what, we just Season 12. Season 12. We'll be filming, so and I'm All-Stars 5 will be filming. Assuming if that films, that's always a summertime thing. Uh, it could be earlier in the summer, later towards summer, fall. Um, I'm assuming I'll be back to work. I, ha I haven't had a reason to think not. Um, I will say that um, there, Rue is currently filming a show uh, for Netflix, which is being it's, right. Uh, it's being advertised. Queen, yeah. So no secret there for me. I'm not spilling any tea on that. But um, that is a union show, mm -hmm. and so because of that, um, I was not. They needed a a union hairdresser, and I am not a union hairdresser. Did you decide not to join the union? I decided not to join. It's a $5,000 fee to join. Mm -hmm. And um, I am not, I'm uh, on Drag Race, We it's a different title. Right. So on on this, it was absolutely required, and I'm just not in the position. Um, again, you know, uh, we work for those local rates. Right. I so, you. Uh, you know, no shade, my, my rent's due at the same time yeah. every month. <laughs> yes, it and, is. And um, I just... I don't plan, I, I don't, I didn't necessarily see myself being the person who was going to spend the rest of my career doing um, hair on just a daily basis. I wanted, I see myself doing RuPaul's hair or doing hair for a specific client that would ha be having a star request or a star, a star status or working on a show where there were character wigs, not per, not per se like in between doing personal male or female grooming. So because of that, um, the cosmetology license that I got so many years ago has been expired. So- Girl, you gotta update your right. license. You so, want an Emmy. Well, if I wanna do that kind of work, I would mm. have to do that. I don't need, I don't, I don't desire to do that kind of work. I so because see. of that, um, I would have to have those two things in line. And when the negotiations for this show happened, those two things needed to be in line immediately. And if they weren't in line, someone else would have to be chosen. So an amazing hairdresser is working with her on AJ oh. and the Queen. And I know it's going to be flawless and it's going to look flawless. I've seen his beautiful work. Um, and um, I've heard that they're going into uh, Drag Race UK production. Right. We've heard that that rumor going around. And um, I have not received a phone call or a request to a company um, for the show in the UK. So I think um, um, somebody else will be doing that. And, um, you know, that's unfortunate, but I will say that um, winning an award or an accolade from your peers doesn't guarantee work. Mm. And, I, and I've learned that. Wow. It doesn't guarantee work and it doesn't guarantee um, specific solidarity at all times. Mm. Um, but I also will say if you're, you know, if I was uh, Pamela Anderson's hairdresser, who I have actually been friends with, um, if I was Pamela Anderson's hairdresser on Baywatch or VIP, you know, she knows exactly what she wants to look like. And if she determined that you're not providing what I want to look like, I would understand, you know? Mm. I, I know the dresses I like to wear. And I, like the, the, I know the things that are made for me. And if I don't like something, I'm not going to wear it. And I'm not going to want that person to make me anything anymore. So there could be the case that, you know, I, I, I've never been guaranteed. I don't have a contract is what I'm saying. So. Uh -huh. If I'm not asked to come back, then I guess I, I either provided something inferior or whatever. But I will say that it, it is nice to have always had um, the appreciation of peers and have, to have been known that I would have dropped my schedule and been available to the work for 9, 10, 11, two all-stars. That's almost five seasons of work. Um, 
when I was asked to drop everything, and I did. So, you know, I, I would be available to do that again, and I've always been available to do that, and hopefully P that's acknowledged. Well, oh, honey, you're an Emmy winner. I mean. Can we get a cheers to Delta Work, Emmy winner, <laughs> legend, icon. Thank you for being here, sweetie. Always a pleasure me. to chat with you, so and I really fun. do think that you stepped into what could have been one of the most intimidating, difficult situations, had to completely flip sides, going from front of the camera to behind the camera. I think you did it amazingly. Thank you. So you turned it so fiercely Ooh, there okay. and everywhere that you have snatched a trophy, I'm sweetie! Yay! We get the upgraded one this year. <laughs> Look at her, a real winner. And I know you got your, your man, but there's no reason why you can't have a little dalliance with oh, I'm two still alive? exotic gentlemen because you've won yourself a lap dance. Woo! Come on, Woo! fellas. Oh my god. A double lap dance. A double. Oh my god. Where's uh -huh. my dollar? That's right. Uh huh. Oh Very dollars. nice. Yes. Oh, that's good. I love it. <laughs> I love this. Uh huh. Give it to our good. Look, look, uh -huh. Oh it. my goodness. What is lady Brad Dick is always a black lady screaming. Hey, love. queen. Hey, queen. Hey, queen. Yeah. Oh, hey, queen. <laughs> nice. Woo. Very nice. Now, we're not finished with Delta. She is, of course, going to look at some of her besties and worsties on Look At Us. So you'll make sure to tune into that. Thank you, Lady Rad. You always look gorgeous. Uh -huh. And most importantly, thank you to thank Delta. You. And we'll see you next time on Hey Queen. Bye, baby. <laughs>